Hey, what's up? This is Altcoin here. For this video, we're checking out some more stuff from Riot Division, which I've already looked at a few times in the past with a few different jackets and stuff. They recently launched their SS18 collection to some attention online. Um, there are a couple of different jackets, a few different pants, a few mid-layer options as well. And they were kind enough to send me uh, one jacket and one pair of pants as well. So thank you very much to those guys. For this video, I'm going to be focusing on their Lizard jacket, which at $350, I believe is their most expensive jacket to date. Although in tech wear terms, still a fair bit under what you might see from the likes of ACG and all those other kinds of brands. When I saw this on the website, I immediately thought this was the most interesting thing of the season. So let's take a look. The right division lizard jacket is a parka length jacket in its default configuration which comes in both black and olive or khaki i've got the olive version here i thought it made a little bit of a nice change to all the black jackets that i seem to own in the back there stylistically this is very geometric very brutalist there's a lot of very clear obvious pocket placements in very straight lines and this to me is very typical of riot division style and i like that this is something that they're doing they're very much developing their own aesthetic to the point that I feel that with Riot Division, you can more easily tell that it's a Riot Division jacket compared to a lot of other techwear brands out there, particularly the ones on the slightly more affordable side of the spectrum. A lot of techwear brands go for that off-center or off-axis kind of thing, whereas with Riot Division, it's always very boom, boom, pocket, pocket, zip, zip, but still with the same kind of detailing that you would expect from a techwear jacket. Aside from those pockets and zips that I mentioned though, the branding and the other design features are actually kept to a minimum. Them. On one of the arms, there is a Velcro Riot Division badge, so that's a small piece of branding and you can take that off if you don't want it. Towards the base of the jacket, there's a little Riot Division tag and that's it. So the design of this one pretty much does the talking rather than any kind of branding. You'll also notice that that extended parka length of the jacket is almost split off from the main body. That's not just a design thing, there is a function behind that as well, which I'll talk about a little bit later in the video. In my opinion, the sizing here is pretty good. The modularity jacket that I got last year was a little bit too big for me in large, whereas this comes up pretty much perfectly. And large is normally the size that I would take for t-shirts and jumpers and stuff. So it's not too tight anywhere. It doesn't feel restrictive in any way. And the articulated arms help with that a little bit as well. So it feels like you can move quite freely in this despite it being quite long. The hood and neckline do a pretty good job as well. The neck comes up to a similar kind of level that you would expect from a lot of techwear jackets. A little bit higher than most high street stuff. And the hood is decent as well. It fits my big head so that always gets a thumbs up from me. Before I talk about the coolest feature of this jacket I'm going to go over the pocket detailing quickly. So at the top there are two taped zips one on each side. This is easily big enough for any big size smartphone and you can get a few extra bits in there as well. So there's definitely ample space up there and the bottom two pockets are even bigger so you can pretty much get anything you want in there. They really are pretty deep but that's it in terms of pockets. There isn't anything on the inside you'll only find a little Riot Division label which is quite cool but not a pocket. I know some people do like carrying some of their stuff on the inside, so that's gonna be a bit of a shame for those people. But the top two zipped pockets from a security perspective in terms of getting stuff stolen and from a water resistance perspective because those zips are taped, um, those will still do a pretty good job for keeping your stuff safe. The sleeves are adjustable with the Velcro as well. That's my preferred method for altering the tightness of the sleeves. It's definitely a step up from the modularity jacket which had little poppers and the, their Kickstarter jacket, the City jacket, that had the weird kind of pull cord things, and I think it's better than that as well. On to the coolest part of this jacket now, and the reason why it's called the Lizard Jacket. Not because it lets you control world governments, but because, like a lizard, you can shed your skin. Not your actual skin, that would be awful. But the bottom part of this jacket totally unzips to change it from a Parker length jacket into something much shorter. And that is, of course, the reason why it's split at the front. And then once you've pulled that extra length off, you can turn it inside out through one of the pockets, and then that can all be folded up and put into a little bag, basically, so you can carry it off with you or just pack it away somewhere. Although this does have a strap so you can carry it, I don't really see it being that useful in that you'd have to be pretty desperate to unzip part of your jacket just to then carry it somewhere with you but the fact that it packs up into a little pouch is pretty useful because if you're carrying a bag or something like that with you then you can very easily just stick it in there and you don't have a really big unwieldy sheet of material to deal with or if you decide long term or for one season you would rather just go for the short jacket then you can very easily store that little pouch away without having to keep attaching it back to the jacket for fear of it getting lost or blowing away or whatever so for me the real value in this is not the 
that you can change on the fly between two different looks because let's face it, you're probably not going to do that because the zip is slightly unwieldy and then you have to pack it up and that sort of thing. But the fact that this jacket gives you two distinctive looks in one, buying techwear jackets obviously is an expensive hobby. So you really want each one to do as much work for you as possible. And this one gives you access to two distinct styles. You've got a very winter appropriate long length parka and then you've got something which is perhaps a little bit more summer ready, certainly a bit more lightweight in the form of the shorter jacket. And the outcome of that, of course, is that you can wear this jacket in more outfits and more scenarios, which is always a good thing. And combine that with the fact that this comes in very neutral, very tech appropriate olive and black colors, and that the design of it is while distinctive to Riot Division is not particularly kind of outrageous or crazy in itself, then I think this is gonna be pretty flexible and it's gonna be something that you can easily wear in quite a lot of different outfits. Unfortunately for you guys, the weather outside of the last few days has been like mid 20s and sunny, so I can't exactly do a rain performance test, but I am gonna talk about the material of this a little bit anyway. The material on paper is pretty similar to previous Riot Division jackets. This boasts 8K millimeters of water resistance and breathability. For reference, Gore-Tex is 28K. So it's a fair bit different to that, but I think in most rain scenarios, unless you really are kind of out on the slopes on the side of a mountain that's pouring down with rain for an entire day, you'll probably be okay. I can't see this soaking through. It does, however, have a slightly different look and feel to the transformative jacket. It's a little bit coarser texture-wise, and it feels like the material has a little bit more texture to it, whereas on the previous one, it was a very smooth, almost slightly shiny material. The material isn't the same on the inside, of course. This is a three-layer jacket, so there's the membrane layer on the inside that you'd actually be touching. And because this is a summer jacket, in theory, there's no lining or anything, so it's just for rain protection as opposed to actual warmth, but it does mean that if you're wearing this with like a t-shirt or something, not that you would necessarily do that, that your skin is gonna be touching that membrane layer directly which is not as comfortable as a lining would be. That combined with the material being quite stiff, this is a similar level of stiffness to Gore-Tex, I feel, that it's not the most comfortable jacket for summer wearing in the world. But the good sizing and the articulation do help with that, as does the double zip, so you can open this jacket up a little bit, which definitely helps on the maneuverability side of things. The unzipping and reattaching of the lower part of this jacket can be a little bit fiddly. I'm not 100% used to it yet, because I've only done it a few times. But as I say, I think the transformative nature of this jacket doesn't really lend itself to being used on the fly. It's more a, at the start of the day before you go out type thing. So on that basis, it's not quite as bad that it can be a little bit fiddly. And as I say, probably over time, you will get used to the mechanism a little bit better. So overall, I feel like this is one of, if not the best jacket from Riot Division yet. I think the transformative functionality is really, really cool. It works well. It genuinely does give you two different looks of jacket, which is potentially quite important if you want to get maximum use out of something. I think a softer or a more pliable material could have worked well here, particularly on the basis that this is supposed to be a spring-summer release, and this does, especially at parker length, very much feel like a winter jacket. I know it's unlined, so it's not really warm or anything, but nonetheless, it just feels quite heavy duty when you're wearing it. There's decent pocket space, even though there's nothing on the inside. I think it looks good, it fits pretty nicely as well. The look fits well with Riot Division's aesthetic, which they're building up over time, and I think this is gonna fit pretty well in tech wear outfits too. So although at $350, this is quite expensive by Riot Division standards, in the broader tech wear spectrum, it's certainly not as bad as a lot of other jackets can be. And I think it will make a good investment if you're looking to get into tech wear and you want multiple looks without having to splash out on multiple jackets. But overall, I have to say I feel very positively about this one. And that is pretty much everything on the Riot Division Lizard jacket. Do let me know what you guys think about this one. I hope you like that transforming stuff. I'm glad that Riot Division are willing to experiment with this kind of thing. And I think this is one of their better transforming experiments. As I said earlier, it's currently extremely hot in the UK, so I'm gonna finish this video before I turn to pure liquid. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a like. And that is everything. So I will see you in the next one. Shout out to I'm Nerdy, you know. And shout out to Matt Oberlin. I didn't know that vest was a UK exclusive word, so I guess we're all learning something today. Thanks so much for getting all the way to the end of this video. If you want to catch some more, they're going to be going up there either side of this big old head of mine. 
And if you haven't subscribed yet, but you've been enjoying some techware videos, you want to catch some more, then there's going to be a little button on one of those two sides as well. And you can click that, you can be subscribed, and then when more cool tech stuff comes out or general fashion, sneaker heady stuff, whatever I feel like doing basically, um, that's going to be up there as well.